Hello, Ethan. Hello, baby Lukey Luke. And hello, my little big boy Raphael now. Little story from you, from Nanny and Zandad. It was actually Luke and Ethan. It was your dad's, one of his favourite stories when he was a little boy. And it's called Naughty Nigel. Naughty Nigel thought he could do anything he wanted. Whenever he was asked to do something he hated, he would pretend not to hear properly. Then he would do just what he wanted instead. His parents thought he was trying to be good. It was just that his ears didn't work very well. The best head doctor in the whole world couldn't find anything at all wrong with Nigel's ears. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that Nigel did. On Monday, his father asked him to wash the dishes. Yes, Dad, said Nigel. Away he went and nobody saw him again until the evening. When Nigel came into the kitchen to give the cat its supper, his father asked about the dishes. Oh, said Nigel, I thought you said wash the fishes and that's what I've done, but they weren't very dirty. Father felt rather sorry for Nigel and his ears that didn't work properly. On Tuesday, Nigel had to go to the dentist, who wanted to make a hole in his teeth, then fill it in again. Get your hat, said Mother, who was going to see him to the bus. After two hours searching, she found Nigel in an upstairs corner with his pants. Mother was cross because it was too late for the dentist and she shouted at Nigel. Oh, I'm sorry, Mum, he said. I thought you said paint the cat. Mother felt very sorry for Nigel and his sleepy ears. <laughs> Nigel was naughty on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday too. It was a lovely week. When Arthur dust the stairs, he went to the zoo to bust the bears. Well, they were too big to bust, so he teased them terribly instead. He had lots of fun doing all of his favourite bad things. And all the time, the grown-ups said how sorry they felt because of his ears. And they gave him little presents. As in being naughty to the bears. On Saturday, Nigel went to play in the woods. His parents had told him, be home by seven. Hmm, thought Nigel. I think I heard them say eleven. So Nigel stayed out dreadfully late. So late, he began to doze under a tree. And then strange things began to happen. The trees about him seemed to move and change colours. Strange animals popped out of the ground and Nigel didn't know if he was awake or asleep. A strange little man came skipping down the path. The little man seemed friendly and he spoke in a squeaky voice. Hello, welcome to Nightland. This is where dreams come true. I'm in charge. He peeped into a tiny red book. You're Nigel, yes? What would you like? Magic, money, wildest dreams? The little man seemed to be in a frightful hurry and his words tumbled out. Nigel was so surprised he couldn't think of a single wish. The little man hopped from foot to foot. Hurry, hurry, boy. I haven't got all night. Still, it was a chance too good to miss. And Nigel blurted out the first thing that came into his head. Uh, I wish, uh, uh, I wish, I wish I had a golden rose. There was a puff of striped smoke and something happened. Nigel had a huge golden nose. It was so huge he could see it without a mirror and it was extremely heavy. The little man listened to Nigel's words. Oh, I'm sorry, he murmured. I thought you said a golden nose. Never mind, you may have that wish again. This time Nigel knew exactly what to ask for. I wish, I wish my nose was the way it was before. Granted, said the little man. <laughs> the 
Nigel touched his nose. It was still long and glossy. And then he noticed his feet. What have you done? He shrieked. I wanted my nose to be the way it was before. The little man frowned. Oh, I'm so sorry, he said sadly. I thought you said you wanted your toes to cover more of the floor. Never mind. You can have that wish again. Nigel stared at his monstrous feet over his golden nose and said carefully, I wish my feet were just an ordinary pair. Nigel watched his feet, and to his horror, they began to turn brown and hairy. What's happening, he sobbed. All I wanted was an ordinary pair of feet. Pair, said the little man. Sorry, I thought you said bear. Never mind, you can have that wish again. Not likely, gasped Nigel through his tears. Things are getting worse and worse. Sobbing into his soggy brown fur, he bled fled blindly into the nightland forest. <laughs> Nigel stumbled on, not noticing the way the nightland changed into the ordinary dayland he was used to. Dawn was just breaking as he arrived home. As quiet as a mouse, he crept into bed. He felt uncomfortable because his pyjamas didn't fit. Tucking his horrid golden nose under the blankets, he tried to sleep. All he could think about is, oh, what my friends are going to say when I go to school. How they would laugh at a bear with big feet and a long golden nose. <clears throat> Next morning, <clears throat> Nigel rushed to the mirror to find that he was his old, ordinary self again. He was so happy, he spent the day doing not so very naughty things. In the afternoon, his father came into the garden where Nigel was playing circuses with the cat. Would you go to the orchard and collect some logs, said father. Nigel had a wonderfully, gloriously interesting, naughty idea. He would pretend he thought his father said, collect dogs. And then he would fill the garden with dogs for his circus. Yes, Dad, said Nigel. <clears throat> but Nigel didn't collect dogs. He collected logs. He remembered his dream and he didn't want to be mixed up with misunderstandings ever again. Or was it a dream? It seemed awfully real at the time. Was it? Wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed that. Nine night my Ethan. Nine night Lukey Luke. And nine night big boy Raphael. I hope you enjoyed this as much as me and you do. <laughs> Love you all. Love you. <laughs> nine night boys, we love you all. Bye. Bye.